All right, let's talk about parental narcissistic abuse. If you are a child who endured narcissistic abuse, I feel you and I understand where you are. Now, there's something quite particular about being subjected to abuse so early in life and from people you actually trusted. So when the abuse starts and you are fully open, naive, have no resources, no other choices, you're actually just this malleable thing that somebody could do with it what they want. Unfortunately, people with narcissistic traits, with emotional immaturity, so basically they're little children in an adult body having the authority of a, of a king inside a home, they could do with you what they wish, and whatever they're doing, you will consider it to be something that you either deserved or that's how it should happen. They become an authority that you cannot question or should not question. They place themselves on a pedestal. They put it and they step on it themselves by the words they're, they're saying, how they're describing themselves, how they're constantly predicting what's going to happen to you while it's subconsciously giving you instructions as to how to fail, really. Because if someone constantly points out the ways in which you're worthless, not good enough, never amount to anything, never going to achieve, can't get anything right, eventually you're going to fail. And when you do, they're going to say that they knew it and they told you so. These kind of people, they get to raise children, are actually, it, it's a criminal way to raise children. And I'm sorry if you're one of those parents, but this is the truth. Because a child that is subjected to such abuse in such unfair terms. They're fully trusting, fully vulnerable. They have blind love and obedience towards the parent they rely on so that they can stay alive. And that parent is so immature that considers this child to not only be a toy they can play with and, and project on them everything they hate about themselves and then just play along with that and set them up to go and self-destruct, but also they create an ambience where that child is not safe to be themselves, is not safe to, to connect in the world, and they create adults who are fearful of life, fearful of reality, fearful of connection. And these kind of people that are created through such extreme betrayal that occurs when an emotionally immature person takes over trying to raise you but actually is in active, active competition with you, trying to destroy you, right? You're thinking you're being loved, but you're actually abused and you're programmed to self-destruct for their own pleasure. They remain unaware for the ways in which they hate themselves, but they are very aware of all the things that they hate about you, which are all of the things that they're projecting. Because they're not aware of their own parts, they're projecting them clearly on you, and hate you for them. They also hate any sign of you that makes you you and special and standing out and seemingly not somebody that they can control. If you're not somebody who will need them in the way that what they want to be needed, you can make your own decisions, you, have, you speak your own mind, you're independent, they will try to bring you back and make sure that you're looking at them so that everything that you do is instructed by them. They need to be in control of their creation, of their possession. They consider you their possession. The reason I teach so much about this is, I mean, I do say that we need to be holding these people accountable, but not because we're going to take them in court and punish them with anything, but they need to be stopped. We need to, be st we need to stop looking at these parents as gods and finally look at them as who they were and what they've done so that we can see how this has impacted us and we can stop doing that to our own children. You see, narcissistic abuse, what we call at least narcissistic abuse now, basically emotional torturing of children, emotional manipulation, toying around with someone's worth and self-concept, manipulating someone's image to how we are feeling and want to project on them, toying around with their psyche, with who they are in an inconsiderate, non-empathic way, 
that would be what narcissistic abuse is. This is something that is a learned skill that we've been passed on by our own parents, that they were passed on by their parents. This is the way we've been loved and raised for generations when we were just little kids being forced to be adults. And then just when we're adults and having our own kids, we just employ whatever we learn from our own parents, which we consider as gods, and then throwing it on our kids. If you ever heard of people saying, well, my parents beat me up and nothing happened to me. And we're like, are you sure nothing happened to you? Because we can see a few things that happened to you. If we don't acknowledge what was done to us, it is very unlikely that we can acknowledge the ways it has impacted us and the ways in which we're doing the same, right? If we don't think that being hurt in the ways that we've been hurt or humiliated in our childhood was something that shouldn't have happened, we won't think twice when we do it to our own kids because we don't think it's a big thing altogether. For us to switch on our empathy and understand what it is that we are doing and bringing in the world into ourselves, we have to do that for our own selves, our own inner child. I talk a lot about this in my course. I learned the language of toxicity your narcissistic parent gave you as a means, right, to, to, to get to know all of the details as to how we've been raised in a way that we're just a replica of those who raised us and they were passing on skills, survival skills for a harsh world. We were made to become harsh, non-empathic, wanting to revenge people, being jealous, hating, carrying rage and anger, competing, feeling like the world is a war zone. But one of the things that I can tell you already is that all of these learned behaviors can be un learned only if we face them, which is something that your narcissistic parent and a lot, most of these narcissistic parents are not willing to do. Being willing to look at ourselves, not just as victims, but also who we became because of what happened to us is how we heal. And I feel like so much out of what we're doing in the healing work is you know, validating the fact that we've been injured, which is the truth, which is of course the truth, but that's only one step out of many. We can validate the truth all we want and be victims all we want. But at some point, we also have to hold ourselves accountable and responsible for how we've adapted and how we've been acting ever since because of that hurt. Because we can't really control what happened to us, but we could definitely control how we're going to respond to the world from now on and show up in a way that doesn't replicate what was done to us to nobody. The way that narcissistic abuse works is that if we remained unhealed and unaware, that fake construct, that false self that we've created, will become stronger and stronger. And then when it's our turn to be parents, or it's our turn to be with people, we will not be able to not inflict pain on them because the inner child that we carry wants to be acknowledged in a way that the only way they know how to do it is through emotional violence, is through being better than, is through abusing, is through discarding, is through rejecting, is through shutting people off. And all of these tactics that we've employed from these people need to become things that we own up not only as things that happen to us, but things that we are employing and we are doing and we are going to be passing on one way or the next until we heal. I feel like so many of us think that disconnecting ourselves or estranging ourselves from our narcissistic parent is going to solve the problem. To be honest, it's going to solve a massive problem because not having them close to continue to tell you those things they've been telling you all along and sort of reinforcing this program of self-destruct, self-hatred, um, you know, just not feeling good about who you are. It's just one part of the equation because when they get out of the picture and you're not listening to them anymore, you're going to begin to listen, that to hear yourself, speak to yourself in a way that is just like a replica of what they've been doing to you. I talk a lot about this in my course, I learned the language of toxicity. And one way to go about where we go in depth around these mechanics of how we're being sort of 
It's almost like they hijack our internal experience and we carry them with. One thing that I would advise you to do to start seeing in what ways you're carrying that parent within is to begin to notice your inner conversation. Your inner conversation, what do you do when something goes wrong, when you make a mistake, when you say something wrong, or somebody is blaming you for something? What are the first thoughts that you're having about yourself? Are you berating yourself? Are you humiliating yourself? Are you criticizing yourself? All of what you're saying, I want you to take note and start noticing on the daily what kind of phrases you're saying and see if you can remember who told you those things and when. And I'm willing to bet some money on the fact that many of those phrases are just trademark phrases of your parent because that's what happens. When these people raise us and constantly project on us and give us all of that toxic information, our brain will just absorb it because that's how we work, right? We absorb what the environment is giving us and then when we're on our own, whatever we learned, we're going to employ it because we think that now we know how to survive. Unfortunately, you've been given skills to survive in a harsh world that looks like a war zone. So if you continue to be that way, that's the experience that you're going to have. But here you are now having glimpses of who you really are and feeling like you're more sensitive and you want love and you love to be around people and you don't really hate people and you're not some kind of monster that you were made out to be but you don't have the skills to navigate in a world that's not a war zone because you go about everything, competing, manipulating, try to do other things, never being open, never being seen, denying reality, being avoidant, being fearful, all of these things as a response to what happened to you. So a starting point would be to recognize within yourself the ways in which you're carrying the parent. And the first would be logging that inner conversation. Some people suggest to talk back, back to that inner critic and tell them to shut up. I don't agree with that, not just yet, because that might fuel your inner hate. And then before you know it, you're just hating on yourself even louder. So for now, I just want you to observe. And the next step after observing is to begin to question, really? Am I really that horrible for dropping a glass in the, of water on the floor? It happens, it just slipped. Or really, am I really that this or whatever, whatever that voice is saying, then you begin to question and see what shows up because none of those things that your mind is telling you is true. These are just the, the things, the mixtape from your parents' favorite phrases. So when we're doing this kind of work, we need to really deconstruct who we are and who we became. And that requires a lot of awareness about what happened to us so that we can get to the part of why we became the way we became. Some people suggest to skip this step. If this works for you, great. I haven't found that this really works. The real, the real impact to deconstruct um, and to really heal this parental narcissistic abuse, which is a hijack to your entire system from your self-concept to everything, to how you feel, how you connect to people, what you think about the world, Everything is infected and contaminated and you have to tear everything down, clean everything up and reconstruct the self you would have been had you not been so brutally abused, right? So that you could, be, be, you could become whoever you were going to become if you didn't have to be who you became in order to survive. This kind of abuse is so complex and it comes in so many layers and I see so many people fall into the traps of, I forgave my parent, really? What did you forgive them for? Did you remember how, in what ways you've been humiliated, discarded, treated like trash? Did you really remember those moments and what those moments did to your psyche? Because if you didn't remember those moments and now you're forgiving, you're possibly just trying to be a little bit more grandiose and a little bit more uh, awakened which is what makes you somebody who's forgiven. All of that rage that you hold repressed about what happened to you and how you were treated in a level so deep that human dignity is being threatened. It's very hard to move on. It's very hard to change. 
and it's very hard to change altogether because this is this is serious stuff this is not this is just i hope that in a few years time people get some sort of emotional evaluation before they become parents because the harm that is done when you're being treated in these ways and being at the mercy of somebody so emotionally mature yet so powerful over you are so serious and so detrimental to the way we perceive ourselves and the way we understand our worth in the world that then when we show up in the world we are having a hard time to connect with this world and to have true empathy for the world and to truly give love to someone because we don't know what that's like, right? We're not taught. So if this is you, start with logging and monitoring the ways in which this parent exists within you and that you are taking this parent as if it's yourself, right? So write down all of the phrases and, and then after you do that for a few days, start questioning all of them as if you're speaking back to them. I don't advise you to take it to the parent, at least not just yet. I also think it's quite pointless for the most part, but start with yourself. Start with yourself and see where you go. This does not have to continue to be your life. Your inner experience has been completely contaminated by their own toxicity and what they taught you. And now you're inwardly hating yourself and talking to yourself like shit and not seeing anything good happen for you because of how much they've injured you, because of how how hostile the inner environment is. And then the, the external environment will kind of mirror that for you. And it is very hard to create a different environment when you don't have skills or knowledge on how to go about and, and, and survive in such an environment, right? You, that's not the environment you were programmed to live in. So we're unlearning, but first we're becoming deeply aware. We're spending time with what is and getting to know who we are and deconstructing that. And then we need to start over. And that's it. That's the journey, really, because that's how we stop generational trauma. That's how we stop being the same as those who hurt us. And that's how we stop being, we stop loving others in the ways that we've been loved through control, through criticizing, through trying to minimize, through trying to overpower and mold people into who we want them to be. And then we start hopefully raising children by just nurturing them and allowing them to be who they are. And we're just there to keep them safe while they're still exploring all of that. So now are you going to be doing that for yourself? Unfortunately, your time's up. You had a bad draw with the parent that you had, but now through your own process of reparenting yourself and reconstructing, you're going to be slowly seeing that you allow yourself to become, you know, to nurture, you're going to be nurturing yourself. You're going to be giving yourself a nurturing environment and an air and air experience that will allow you to grow and express and expand and be who you were going to be. And if whatever happened to you hadn't happened to you and just be your authentic self, you know, and that is the most important thing that you can do for yourself and for those that come after you, but most importantly for yourself and even more importantly for your younger self, for what they went through. I know many of you are resisting to see the truth of what happened to you because for some reason we're thinking, who has time for this? Why am I looking through my past? What's done, it's done. Yes, true. We're not arguing with that. But if you don't recognize and validate what happened to you, your story, your side of the story, so the inner child that you carry that has witnessed all of that and experienced all of that remained unwitnessed. So completely unseen in all of that suffering, completely not validated. And if you don't want to do that now, nobody will. And so that child and that part of you will continue to stay in a place of either denial or trying to repress all of those memories, but it will be holding on to a lot of pain. And when I say it, I mean you. That pain that you hold within, that grief, that anger, that rage, 
that indignation that sparks in you for some random thing that somebody random does lives there because of such chronic abuse, chronic unfairness, chronic be chronically being invalidated, criticized and treated in a way that it wasn't it wasn't what you were worthy of. You were worthy of respect. You were worthy to be validated. You were worthy to be considered. You were worthy of empathy and not somebody emotionally toying with your with your inner inner experience and who you were. So validating all of that as we turn back, and I talk a lot about this in the course, is just a recognition. It's not we're not gonna go there and validate it and then just live there and be like, that's my parent, that's what they did. I hate them. You're gonna go through the motions, of course, of of dealing with what shows up when you truly see what's there to be seen. But the reason we're doing it is not them or forgiveness. I don't want to hear about forgiveness just yet for any of you. Because for forgiveness to happen, for truly to create that space within for that other person to exist and be okay with what happened, you have to be on the other side of what they've done to you, right? You have to, it's, it's like if somebody throws you into fire, you're not going to be burning and be like, okay, I forgive you. You need to get out of the fire, cure the burns. And when the burns are gone, you're like, you know what? I have the scars. That was the experience. I'm ready to move on now. You can't move on while you're being burned alive, right? And this is what this feels like. You're carrying all this rage, all this pain, all this stress, all this self-hatred that you were programmed to sort of uh, live with. But you're like, oh, I forgive them because that's the only way I've been told um, I'm going to move on. You're, you're gaslighting yourself. This is just not, it's just such a degrading thing to be forced to forgive someone you really didn't even keep accountable for what they've done. You just say, oh, I forgive them. That's all they knew. Well, they could have done better. Truthfully, they could have. They didn't, but they could have. And you deserve that validation, at least to be given by yourself. All right, that's all for today. I'll see you guys soon.